Sirius Speedway on a Wednesday. Great to have you along for the ride. Yours truly, the racing guy in the house with Angela Skinner and, of course, producer Bob Tazi. Enjoying uh, speaking to you and having a good time here uh, in the big boy chair today. This is a lot of fun. Hall of Fame week on NASCAR radio is brought to you by Ram Truck. Guts, glory, Ram. Time for us to go back to the hotline right now where we find the driver of the number 31 Chevrolet uh, NASCAR Camping World Truck Series machine, and that would be one James Busher, who is also coming off a eighth place finish in the ABF uh, Chevrolet for the NASCAR Nationwide Series last weekend, and is currently uh, posted as 12th in the uh, standings there as well. James, my friend, happy Wednesday to you. What in the world are you up to today? Happy Wednesday. Uh, just having uh, a good day here in North Carolina, getting ready to go racing uh, here in Charlotte this weekend. You excited about it? I am. Uh, we got XI batteries on the truck again this weekend uh, for the first time since Daytona. And uh, honestly, I think Daytona was the fastest truck we've had all year. So, uh, you know, maybe it's the blue, but we'll see. Um, you know, I'm really looking forward to it this weekend. It's the same truck I ran there last year qualified second and ran in the top five also so um it's a really really good truck for us on the mile and a half and uh hopefully we can run a little better than what we've been doing um you know the last couple of weeks on the concrete james it what seems you, like oh go ahead pat I'm no, sorry. no go ahead i was just i was just gonna ask him real quick what do you like about the lights racing at night place like charlotte i think uh the track cools down gains a lot of grip and uh you know i think having the lights everything reflects off the trucks and and it just i think gets more intense uh you know everything the trucks pick up speed under the lights because it's cooler and, and the track has more grip and uh you know the the air temperature is cooler so everything's just colder and and when everything cools off everything seems to to go a little faster so um i think it's a lot of fun to race under the lights and i think it adds excitement well, James, how about the with Turner Motorsports? I know that it, Phoenix and Dover were some of the races that you didn't feel you were as quite as competitive as we're used to seeing the the Turner Motorsports trucks. But the intermediate tracks, which starts to kick in to high gear now for you guys, it seems like that program's a little bit better. Why? Why is that? I really don't know. Um, I, I wish I did know, so we could run a little better on the other tracks. Uh, you know, I don't think we were. I don't think we were very good at Nashville, and I don't think we were very good at Dover. And, uh, you know, I don't know why that is. Our trucks just didn't have a lot of grip those two weeks in a row, or two races in a row. So, um, you know, we got a top five and a top ten finish out of them, but, uh, and climbed in the points every week. So we made the most of those races, and, uh, you know, I, I just feel like we need to get better on those tracks. But, yeah, you're right. Our trucks do run better on the mile and a half tracks. It's just, uh, I guess, where our program's excelling in and uh we're we're working hard to get everything else caught up to to that standard and also try to improve on the mile and a half stuff but um you know the good thing for us is these next three truck races are on mile and a half so hopefully we can string together some good finishes james let me talk to you a little bit about um you know changes to the to the truck you know you talked about last year starting up front uh you know at charlotte and 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 having a good night you know since that race to just to pick one arbitrarily since that race how much smarter have you gotten if smarter is the right word about the changes that a little bit of air pressure a little bit of weight jacked into either corner etc how much smarter have you gotten about what you want to change the truck or car where it's a little more raceable i think uh i think i've gotten a lot smarter with it uh you know in the truck series and, and being able to run the same trucks you know we've got a handful of trucks that we run on our 31 team and uh you know most of the mile and a half tracks for sharp for this weekend for instance i run chassis number 11 majority of the races on a mile and a half and we raced it at darlington and and most of the mile and a half last year but um you know it just comes with experience i think the more you try different things and you, you just catalog all that stuff in the back of your brain you know okay we we let a pound out of the right front that really helped it then you remember that for the next time when you're feeling the same problem you can tell your crew chief and you have more knowledge of what it did for you in the past so it just comes with experience and seat time and and 
you know, you just catalog it all and, and uh, store it for the future. And uh, it definitely, definitely seems like making changes has gotten easier, you know, the more that I race. So uh, I feel like I learned something each and every week and, and uh, to be able to run two races last weekend and then two races again this weekend, and, you know, as many races as I can possibly run, that's the more that I can possibly learn. So, you know, I'm glad that I get to run these handful of nationwide races this year on top of the truck schedule to, to try to speed up my learning process even faster. Well, one thing that you've definitely learned how to do is, is get back in the top ten because even <laughs> even if you guys seem to struggle during the race, near the end of the race, I look up at the scoring pylon and I'm like, well, yep, James has got himself back in the top ten. So you're definitely a fighter. It, uh, it definitely wasn't easy for us in the truck, truck race last week. Um, you know, our Space Coast Center Chevy wasn't very good off the truck, wasn't very good in qualifying. We We qualified in the top 15, which was an improvement from practice, but um, you know, our very, I got us in the top 10, I think in the first five laps of the race and, uh, the truck was really good on new tires and, and could make it through traffic pretty good. But our first pit stop, we dropped a lug nut and then that same wheel ended up being loose about 25 laps later. And we had to pit green flag and we lost a lap and got a lucky dog. And then we lost a lap later on and got the wave around. So it was, a uh, a stressful race and, and an up and down day for us, but at the end of the day, you're right. We we fought back and got us back in the top ten, and uh, you know got a solid solid finish and gained four spots in the points. So you know we're steadily creeping back up to the top ten after having some rough races at the beginning of the year. And uh, you know hopefully we just cut out all bad races. You just have to turn a bad day into a top ten like we did this weekend, and uh, and that'll get us back up in the points and maybe be able to contend for the championship at the end of the year. On average, James, are you, and, and I would assume because of the ex more experience in the truck side that I know the answer to this question, but on average, are you smarter with changes to the truck than you are with the nationwide car? Yeah, I think so. And and I think more, you know, if, if it was still the old nationwide car, probably not. But this new car is so new and they these guys in the nationwide series are learning something every single day on how to make these cars drive better. And what kind of changes are going to get the feel that they want because the changes on the nationwide car are so much different. They, the car reacts different than what a truck does and what the old nationwide car and anything I've ever worked with in the past does. Um, you know, a track bar adjustment does something different to the nationwide car than anything I've ever worked with. So just having more races, you, same thing, you learn more and more each and every week, but I feel like I'm behind whenever I go to the nationwide car because these guys are running them every single week and I'm, I just jump in and try to go. But, um, you know, having a couple of races pretty close together, you know, Richmond and, and then Dover and then again this weekend in Iowa, you know, I think speeds up the learning process even more, kind of the same thing we were talking about earlier. And, uh, you know, I think even when you're not in the car, you need to be paying attention to what the guys that are in the car are talking about, you know, the, the different changes that they're making and, and just be around and listen to them on the radio and, and uh, you know, try to remember all that for whenever I do get back in the nationwide car later on this year. So um, these new cars are just so different. And, you know, Stuart Cooper, my crew chief on the nationwide, he tells me every day he learns something new on them every single day because, you know, they are so new to the series. Are you a shop guy? You know, can can you learn enough at the track and and on you know, and I realize on the phone and and you know, email and et cetera. But but are are you a shop guy? Do you feel better prepared if if you're in the shop at some point during the week or or every couple of weeks, et cetera? You got any kind of routine to any of that? I don't really have a routine. I get to the shop as much as I possibly can. I still live in Texas, so um, I actually drove up here to North Carolina yesterday. Um, and I'm going to be here, you know, all through next week and, and, you know, spend a lot of time in the shop. But I make it here. I mean, I was here before Dover. I was here before Richmond. I make it here at least every other week, sometimes maybe once a month. But I feel like I am more prepared knowing what's going on in the shop. And, and I know a lot about the rotation that our trucks are in as far as how prepared they are and, um, you know, what different parts and pieces we're going to run. And uh, I think knowing all that kind of stuff just, you know what you have when you get to the racetrack you're you're not asking a million questions in practice when you're trying to figure out how to make the car faster and figure out what's underneath the car in the first place so you you have to know 
where your your setup is when you get there to help speed up the process of the changes that you're going to make and and uh, and that sort of thing. Okay, so so outside of racing, how's the wedding planning going? Just just Ooh. wondering. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> because, had to bring that up. Yeah, well, from, from what I, from what I've heard, his his beautiful fiance Chris has had like 15 showers. <laughs> well, she had one on the, the the day of the Coke 600. Will be her, her last one, I think. And, yeah. Uh, you know, we have I have a lot of family in Florida, and then we obviously have a lot of family in in Texas, and then we're friends with everybody in racing so to try to get everybody in one spot's pretty hard so she had one in texas and then she had one in florida and then she's having one in north carolina next weekend so kind of hit all the spots and keep everybody included so it kind of makes it kind of nice but uh as far as the wedding planning things are chugging right along and uh i actually i don't know how or why but i volunteered to plan the whole honeymoon by myself she's not even going to know where we're oh. going until we get to the airport after the wedding. So well, you might have been off a little bit more than I can man. do. <laughs> I can help you with this, James. I am the travel <laughs> diva. Trust me. I spend more time searching online for these cool vacation destinations. And now that I have a job again, I really take it seriously. So just uh, come, come come see me. But and uh, I, think, I'll I really <laughs> think I might have been off a little bit more than I can chew, but uh, I'll find a way to pull it off and make it something she'll remember forever. But uh no, I, that's how the plans are going. I'm well, planning the the after part. <laughs> the, the fun part, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The fun now, part. I'm looking no, forward to the interview after you get yeah. back from the honeymoon. That's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> that week we'll Wait, interview Chris. Or not? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, just, just to get her general reaction to your yeah. hard work, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do that. <laughs> that would James, we appreciate the time. Good luck this weekend. Hope that uh, hope that uh, all your rides work out uh, for the best. Look forward to seeing you at the racetrack this weekend. I appreciate it. I'll see you all this weekend. All right. James Busher joining us here on Sirius Speedway this afternoon, driving the number 31 Chevy NASCAR Camping World Truck Series.